At sunrise. Now at six, winter weather sweeps the gorge. Roads are thawing this morning, but freezing rain, sleet, and snow still pose a threat at higher elevations. We also have new information on how the weather is affecting some schools in the gorge. Suing the city for a half million dollars. A woman says the city of Portland owes her money after an explosion at a neighboring homeless camp damaged her house. Also, the Timbers return from a tough loss in Atlanta to end their season. We may not have the MLS Cup here in Portland, but I'm going to say we still have the very best fans in the league. Our season was incredible, so nothing but happy and, and nothing but super proud of our guys. We'll recap Saturday's MLS Cup Championship match coming up. Plus, in an all-new Verify report, you know these rawhide bones are really popular holiday gifts for dogs. We investigate if they're dangerous for your pets. And happy holidays uh, this morning. Sunrise is going to the dogs in the best way possible. That's Coming up this morning, we'll introduce you to a pet from the Family Dogs New Life Shelter. Time to take a look at the Monday morning commute. You can see we are slowing down up in Vancouver. It is really jammed. I-5 southbound between Mill Plain and the Interstate Bridge. Not doing too bad on I-84. Just some minor brake tapping right there as you approach the I-5 split. Highway 26 inbound from Hillsboro still looks good. All right, good Monday morning. I say good Monday morning and I mean it. <laughs> uh, Lacey in for traffic this morning. Chris, you're handling weather and we had a super soaker of a Sunday. Let's talk about how wet it's going to be. Say that three times fast. Super soaker of a Sunday. Uh, let's talk about how wet it's going to be this week. Wet week ahead. More on that in a second. First off, let's give you the live look from Pioneer Courthouse Square where the bricks, yeah, they're wet, but we're actually starting to dry things out just a little bit for today. So with that in mind, the rain giving way to fog for the bus stop forecast. Temperatures in the upper 30s, a little less wind, but foggy conditions out there. Salem at last check down to a quarter mile visibility. So here's the deal with today. We'll actually see that rain continuing to diminish. So with that in mind, I think maybe even a sunbreak or two later today. But this is a snapshot of the week ahead. The next seven to eight days of rainfall. Western Oregon, Western Washington, we've got a soaker of a week ahead. I've got more on that coming up in your full forecast in just a few minutes. OK, thank you so much, Chris. Right now, we want to give everybody a live look from our ODOT camera on I-84 at 223rd Avenue. You know, the gorge has seen ice, freezing rain, sleet, snow. It all fell yesterday, and it is affecting schools. I can tell you this morning that the Lyle School District buses are on snow routes this morning. White Salmon. Your school district is opening two hours late and in the Pendleton School District out east, buses on South Hill are on snow routes. So we went out to the Hood River area last night and drivers we talked to said you can never be too careful when it comes to traveling in cold, wet conditions. It's slick. I mean, you're not going to want to go fast, that's for sure. Um, if you got four wheel or chains, that's what you're going to want. Okay, the good news is that that winter weather advisory in the gorge and the Cascades expired this morning. Now to more weather, millions of people are feeling the impact of a massive winter storm in the southeast. It's shutting down roads, causing widespread power outages too. NBC's Miguel Almaguer is in North Carolina with more on the conditions. Good morning, Miguel. Ashley, good morning. A serious winter storm is gripping the south. You can see the snow here behind me, but really the big concern is what's beneath it. All of the ice covering the roads. There were thousands of accidents here over the weekend coming up on the Today Show. We'll show you what our cameras found over the weekend. We'll also take also take you overhead with our drone to give you a wider perspective of what they face out here. Ashley, back to you. Thank you, and the Today Show will have more on this storm slamming the southeast. That all starts this morning at 7 o'clock. It is four minutes after six o'clock now. A Portland lawyer is suing the city for more than half a million dollars. This all comes two years after she made this emotional plea. I don't want this camp to stay here, though, because now my children have been put at risk. Again, that was December of 2016. Raylinda Peterson showed us at the time the damage to her home after an explosion in the homeless camp next door. She and her two daughters got out safely and the city cleared that camp days later. Peterson says her home also doubles as her law office and that was damaged as well. Our news partner, The Oregonian, reports Peterson is now suing the city to cover the cost of repairs as well as business lost. The lawsuit claims the city forced that camp to move to the lot right next door to her house and authorities didn't enforce various health and safety codes. A representative for the mayor's office declined to comment. 
It is 6.05, time for some other news headlines in your morning rush. More than 200 faith leaders are expected to meet on the U.S.-Mexico border in San Diego today. They're calling this a mass action supporting the migrant caravan from Central America. A Quaker organization known as the American Friends Service Committee organized the event. It's worked with migrants and refugees for more than a century. While the pressure's on French President Emmanuel Macron to announce measures to calm violent protests. He's expected to address the country today for the first time since the riots began December 1st. Last week, Macron withdrew a fuel tax hike that started these protests, but many people say that move is too little too late. The European Union's top court has ruled that Britain can change its mind about Brexit. That's great news for those people who want to stay in the EU. Back in 2016, Britain voted to leave that 28-nation union. A group of Scottish lawmakers asked the European court to rule on whether the UK can pull out of that withdrawal procedure. President Trump is weighing his options on who will replace John Kelly as his next chief of staff. His top pick was Nick Ayers. He's chief of staff to the vice president. However, a White House official says Ayers and the president couldn't reach an agreement on how long he'd serve. Ayers is the father of young triplets and had long planned to leave the administration at the end of the year to return to his home in Georgia. The Chinese foreign ministry summoned U.S. Ambassador Terry Branstad to a meeting in Beijing yesterday. The Chinese official is demanding the U.S. cancel the order that led to the arrest of a Chinese national in Canada. She is the chief financial officer at a major tech company and is accused of fraud. And that's your Morning Rush. say PDX belonged to the Timbers fans yesterday. A crowd gathered at the airport to welcome back the Timbers after Saturday's loss to Atlanta United in the MLS championship match. Despite the loss, fans congratulated the team on an incredible season. So KGW's Orlando Sanchez is back as well from covering that championship match in Atlanta. He's talking both Timbers and Blazers this morning in your weekend sports wrap. Saw him at the beginning, saw him all the way throughout. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gio. Awesome first season, man. And just thanks for the magic. Once we knocked Seattle out, everything else was gravy. Our season was incredible. So nothing but happy and, and nothing but super proud of our guys. Lots of supporters lined up at PDX to welcome home the Portland Timbers and say thank you for a memorable run to the MLS Cup. Good morning, everyone. I'm Orlando Sanchez with your morning sports headlines. The Timbers were on the losing side of a historic day for Major League Soccer. Portland came in as the underdog that just refused to lose, defying the odds all the way to the MLS Cup. But they ran into the league's most dangerous team, Atlanta United. Mercedes-Benz Stadium was electric. Official attendance 73,019, the largest crowd MLS has ever seen. It was a spectacle. Atlanta United, they made the Timbers pay for their mistakes. MVP Joseph Martinez punished Portland. He scored the opening goal and assisted on another. And Atlanta shuts out Portland 2-0 for the MLS Cup. Back-to-back -back wins for the Portland Trail Blazers. After crushing the Phoenix Suns, they rallied to beat the Minnesota Timberwolves on Saturday night. Ripped off a 15-3 run to seal the deal. They're at Houston on Tuesday, Memphis on Wednesday. The Blazers sit in seventh place in the Western Conference stands. The Seattle Seahawks host the Vikings tonight. Big time playoff implications with just four games left in the season. Seattle is fifth place in the NFC playoff race. Minnesota is sixth. Kickoff at 515. That's going to do it for your weekend sports headlines. Have a great day. I'm kind of just ready to forget about I the know, Timbers loss. Bummer. That bummed me out. But next year, I have hope they're going to be a fabulous team next year. Pretty incredible run. First year head coach. Yeah. So we'll see yeah. what Gio can do in year number two. Yep. Magic. Go Timbers.